On this worksheet, we're going to go through a few different types of problems that are all related to conjugated dienes, starting with the synthesis of a conjugated diene. There are two different ways to synthesize a diene. One is to start with a molecule that is an allylic halide. So it's got a carbon-carbon double bond with a halogen in the allylic position and to use a strong base to do an elimination reaction. Because a conjugated diene is the most stable type of diene, the conjugated diene is gonna be formed over any other type. Like for example, a cumulated, cumulated diene would not be formed in this reaction. And here's another example uh, where we're starting with an allylic alkyl halide synthesizing a conjugated diene. Another option is to start with a dihalide with two halogens that are just strategically located. In this um, situation, they're side by side, they're vicinal, but they don't have to be vicinal. They just have to be in the right positions that a conjugated diene could come out of the reaction. So it could have one here and one here, and they would both eliminate this way, or you could have one here and one here, or one here and one here. Uh, you get the idea. Um, so in the next set of questions, we're going to be looking at some things that relate to the bond length of the single bond that is positioned in between two double bonds in a conjugated diene. Starting by looking at um, the first molecule, the first structure, butane, which has a carbon-carbon bond length of 153 picometers. And we're being asked what the hybridization is of the two carbons in between that bond. I'm going to draw the hydrogens on carbon number two. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds and four areas of electron density around it, which makes it an sp3, SP3 hybrid, same as carbon number three, also an sp3 hybrid. Next question is asking the same thing about two butene. That's this molecule right here. We'll go ahead and draw the hydrogen on carbon number two. Um, this particular carbon atom is got three areas of electron density around it, so that makes this one an sp2 hybrid, which we know is the case when we have a double bond. Now, in, in general, it's um, asking why is the carbon-carbon single bond longer than the carbon-carbon double bond? Uh, we know as a rule that double bonds are shorter than single bonds, but we're asking for why that might be the case, why is the case. Uh, this has to do with the hybridization or of the, the carbon atom that's being used for the bond. This single bond is taking place between two sp3 hybrid orbitals and our other single bond, right, or excuse me, the double bond right here is taking place between two sp2 hybrid orbitals. sp2 hybrid orbitals are shorter than sp3 and because the sp2 hybrid orbitals are shorter, the atoms have to come closer together, the carbon atoms in this case, Carbon atoms using sp2 orbitals, because the sp2 orbitals are shorter, they have to come closer together to bond, which um, ultimately results in a shorter bond length. So now we're being asked the same type of question about hybridization for butadiene. I'm going to draw that butadiene right here, looking at carbon number two and also carbon number three. This is a carbon with one, two, three areas of electron density. So that makes it an sp2 hybrid. And then it's asking why is the single bond in butadiene shorter than the single bond in butane? Because the single bond in butadiene uses sp2 hybrid orbitals, which are shorter. The single bond in butane uses sp3 orbitals, which are longer. Uh, now, next, we're going to rank some molecules with double bonds in them. Conjugation increases the stability, so we want to rank these molecules based off of their stability. And let's say that I'm going to use one for the molecule that is the most stable. Um, so we've got in this worksheet or on this problem, we've got one, two molecules with conjugated double bonds. A conjugated double bond is double bonds that are separated by only one single bond. And the more conjugation we have, the better. So this molecule, which has three conjugated double bonds, is the most stable, and this one with two conjugated double bonds is the next most stable. The worst case scenario in terms of double bonds is to have accumulated double bonds. These are double bonds that are just immediately in series or in sequence. This is going to be the least stable out of all of the molecules. I'm going to give that a five. 
these two molecules are just regular alkenes. This is just a regular alkene over here. This is a diene, but it's an isolated diene, meaning that there is more than one single bond separating the double bonds. And these molecules behave just like regular alkenes. I mean, this one is a regular alkene. However, double bonds in general are more stable than single bonds, so having more double bonds is better than having only one double bond, even though these double bonds aren't conjugated. Last but not least, S-cis and S-trans. S-cis and S-trans are terms that we use to describe the conformation of a diene. Conformation just means shape. So this is a shape. Um, it is a shape that's achieved by free rotation around a single bond. So this is not like an isomer. This isn't like cis or trans isomer. The um, single bond in between two double bonds can freely rotate, and it does freely rotate. So this particular molecule is constantly changing its shape. Sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like this. It's free, it's free to turn at this bond and just switch from one shape to another. The shape on the left, which is kind of like, you know, a trans shape, so this would be a trans alkene, and this has the same sort of zigzag pattern, we call this shape S-trans. It's sort of like a trans shape. And this shape right here it looks like um, a cis alkene, so we call this an S-cis. The stability of S trans and S cis is the same as the stability for a trans alkene or a cis alkene. The S trans shape is more stable than the S cis shape. And so that means that our dienes spend most of their time in the S trans conformation. They are free to turn themselves into an S cis conformation if necessary.